So President Trump tweeted something curious yesterday. He said the following, had a very good and interesting meeting at the White House with A.G. Sulzberger, the publisher of the New York Times, spent much time talking about the vast amounts of fake news being put out by the media and how that fake news has morphed into the phrase enemy of the people. Sad. So, um, that's weird. Everybody looked at that tweet and said, you had a meeting with the New York Times where you guys were openly discussing the idea of fake news, and Trump makes it seem like A.G. Salzberger is agreeing with him in this meeting. So everybody's like, hey, what the fuck is going on here? Well, that then leads A.G. Salzberger to release a statement uh, where he gives his version of events, and of course it differs uh, wildly from what President Trump said. Uh, so here's what he says. I told the president directly that I thought his language was not just divisive, but increasingly dangerous. I told him that although the phrase fake news is untrue and harmful, I am far more concerned about his labeling journalists the enemy of the people. I warn that this inflammatory language is contributing to a rise in threats against journalists and will lead to violence. I repeatedly stressed that this is particularly true abroad, where the president's rhetoric is being used by some regimes to justify sweeping crackdowns on journalists. I warned that it was putting lives at risk, that it was undermining the democratic ideals of our nation, and that it was eroding one of the country's greatest exports, a commitment to free speech and a free press. Throughout the conversation, I emphasize that if President Trump, like previous presidents, was upset with coverage of his administration, he was of course free to tell the world. I made clear repeatedly that I was not not asking for him to soften his attacks on the Times if he felt our coverage was unfair. Instead, I implored him to reconsider his broader attacks on journalism, which I believe are dangerous and harmful to our country. So that that seems like a pretty sober, you know, breakdown and retelling of events from his perspective. The thing that I find absolutely incredible is that Basically, A.G. Salzberger is saying, my point to Trump was, hey, dude, if you don't like our coverage, that's fine, and you could even call us out for it, but just relax a little and pump your brakes a little with the extremist rhetoric. When you say stuff like enemy of the people, I mean, God, you're really putting these people's lives at risk. There was a shooting recently um, at a newspaper, and people died. Now, that was unconnected from Trump, to be fair, because that person had a pre-existing grudge from way before Trump was elected. But, you know, the idea still stands that, hey, you probably shouldn't say stuff like the press is the enemy of the people. That's a little too extreme. You could call us out if you want, if you think we're wrong or whatever, but don't go too far because there are real, real world consequences to this. So A.G. Salzberger says that and Trump's response is immediately when the meeting is over with A.G. Salzberger, uh... He does exactly what Salzberger said. Hey, man, just don't do this one thing. He immediately did it, because I want to read you tr uh, Trump's tweet one more time. He said, Had a very good and interesting meeting at the White House with A.G. Salzberger, publisher of the New York Times. Spent much time talking about the vast amounts of fake news being put out by the media and how that fake news has morphed into the phrase, enemy of the people. Sad. So that's not Donald Trump saying, Okay, I am now no longer going to call the media the enemy of the people. That's Donald Trump saying, myself and the head of the New York Times agreed that there's a lot of fake news and that's bad, and we spoke about how that phrase evolved into enemy of the people. So, he's calling the press the enemy of the people directly after the meeting with the head of the New York Times, when the head of the New York Times said, hey man, the one thing I'm going to ask you to do is please don't call the press the enemy of the people because that's dangerous and that has real world consequences. So, I mean, I guess there's a few options as to why Trump did what he did. Some would probably argue, oh, he's, you know, playing three-dimensional chess, and he's a genius, so he's trolling, and he knows he's doing what, you know, was just discussed that he shouldn't do. My interpretation of it is very different. What I see from this is, Trump, should, Trump didn't get what A.G. Salzberger was saying in the meeting. He just heard the parts where A.G. Salzberger was conciliatory and where he was like, okay, man, just, yes, there is fake news. And even when there is not and you think there is fake news, it is okay for you to call us out. Just please do not say enemy of the people. 
that right over Trump's head probably didn't care and then is too stupid to realize the content of the conversation and why that actually is an important point, a point that I happen to agree with A.G. Salzberger on, and then he just does it. So he's either trolling or he's the world's biggest idiot. And he's like, uh, we discussed uh, fake news and fake news is terrible and sad and bad. And then, uh, we discussed how that phrase became enemy of the people. He's not saying, we discussed that and now I will refuse to call them enemy of the people. He's calling them enemy of the people in the very next tweet. Jesus Christ, he... So he has an authoritarian impulse and... Listen, I I'm the first one to, to do a segment, and you guys can go back and check. I've done countless segments like this where I talk about how the mainstream media does do insane amounts of fake news. And so, it, in one sense, they need to be called out for that endlessly. But the thing is, with Trump, I think everybody understands that when he screams fake news, it's not at actual fake news. He only screams fake news when the stories portray him in a negative way. So that's the difference. I think we should call out fake news and call out mainstream media when they objectively do a shitty job, like they lead us into a war that we shouldn't have been led into in the war in Iraq, or they call torture-enhanced interrogation. When Trump screams fake news, it's not a substantive criticism. When Trump screams fake news, it's, you wrote a negative story about me, so I will scream fake news to try to get you to take back that story. So... Even though I am beyond sympathetic to the idea of lashing out at the media and calling them fake news and breaking down their bullshit, we have to be clear about the posi position from which Trump is making that criticism. And the position is just from a narcissistic, self-aggrandizing, self-serving point of view, where it's not connected to reality, it's just, don't say mean things about me. That, that's what this is. So, it, it's just a sad situation that we're in because... He's letting that get so out of hand, that impulse to like, just don't criticize me because then it's always fake news. That's so out of hand where it's not just the, you know, screaming fake news at the rallies and stuff like that, which is actually fine. I, I think that's totally fair game. If I was president, I would do the same shit because there is a lot of fake news. But when you start saying enemy of the people, I mean, how, we're getting super close to Lugenpresse, you know, lying press, the, the thing that Hitler used to say. Um, now I don't think Donald Trump is Hitler, relax. Uh, I do think he's an authoritarian menace, and I do think that it, the repeated times that he floated, you know, um, opening up our libel laws, making it easier to sue the media when they write negative stories, I do think that that's his, that's his ideal. His ideal is to allow the government to suppress media. Thankfully, we have the First Amendment, and he'd probably lose any of those legal battles, but, you know... It, it is scary that we seem to be at this point where the same way the Fourth Amendment is treated, where it's like, yeah, you have no protection from unreasonable search and seizure. We have the NSA doing warrantless spying on everybody. So that amendment is like non-existent now. I'm afraid that Donald Trump would love to take that next step with the media too and the First Amendment. So, and he makes it really clear, actually, that that's what he wants to do. That's why he said repeatedly, should we, should, should we open up the libel laws? So he wants to make it easier to sue the media to prevent them from running negative stories, but of course he's such an idiot he doesn't understand that that doesn't, that wouldn't just open it up for him. <laughs> that opens it up for any, any president or any person where, you know, if the, the next time there's a, a, a left-wing president, that you open the door now so they could sue the shit out of Fox News or World Net Daily or Daily Caller who do way more fake stories then mainstream media, mainstream media does a lot of fake shit, and they do a terrible job. But WorldNet Daily, Daily Caller, we're talking about outlets that ran serious articles saying there, there was a demon that, was, that accompanied Obama when he did his trip to Africa. So, uh, alright, you want to open this door to suing over shitty media stories? <laughs> That's not a good door to open, because so, there's more of that on the right than it ever was on the left. So... We just, just stop, just relax with the fucking anti-media shit. Again, I get it. And I actually totally agree with A.G. Uh, Solzberger here. 
the fact that he conceded in the meeting to Trump, like, I'm not saying you can't say fake news. I'm not saying you can't call out the press when you think they're wrong. Of course you could do that. I like that he added that because oftentimes what you see in mainstream media is they do their pearl clutching, but then their criticism goes way too far, where they act like no president can ever, ever utter any word of disagreement with the press because that, by definition, is a violation of the First Amendment. No, that's not true at all. And they always do this thing like, us? Me? We did nothing wrong at all. And it's like, no, you actually do do a lot of shit wrong, and you're objectively terrible at your job, and you fucking... MSNBC covered, uh, you know, Stormy Daniels literally 455 times, and Yemen zero times in the last year. We're assisting a genocide in Yemen, and they don't even fucking talk about it. So when they, uh, you know, clutch their pearls and they act like, we did nothing wrong and Trump is the, and Trump is the problem. It's like, no, actually you suck too, and it's a... Totally legitimate and valid criticism to say you guys are terrible also, but That's why it's important that you you know AG Sulzberger was like listen if we do a shitty job Okay, call us out, but just please stop with the enemy of the people stuff Because that is when you go too far that is when you're crossing some sort of a line where it becomes rank authoritarianism and, it, you know, the next step is what Trump has threatened a thousand times, which is try to do some legal action against uh, freedom of the press. And actually, that may come in a very weird and roundabout way with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Because apparently he's about to lose his um, asylum in Ecuador, and they're going to send him to the UK, and then the UK will likely send him to the US. And then they might go after him for, you know... Whatever, any of the leaks that involved classified, top secret information, whatever it may be. And um, I say that's weird and it might come in a roundabout way because <laughs> there's a good argument to be made that with what WikiLeaks did with the DNC email hacks, that helped the Republicans. But see, this is the thing. They don't, they don't care. They don't care. They, would ra they, would, they take a principled stand on the side of authoritarianism. And once you open that door to, okay, we're going to prosecute WikiLeaks for whatever it may be, the, the Chelsea Manning leaks that showed how we're killing innocent people in Iraq and, and our soldiers were laughing about it, um, the DNC email uh, hacks, whatever it might be that they go after him for, now you open the door to uh, prosecuting the media over stories that, you know, you don't like. And then you can't put that cat back in that bag once you do that. And that's deeply against the First Amendment, but I'm afraid that uh, the incorrect interpretation of the First Amendment will take root in this country. And then it's like, I mean, at that point, why even have the Constitution? Because we don't abide by it, almost any of it at that point. <laughs> the Eighth Amendment protection from cruel and unusual punishment, that's gone. I mean, we torture people, we kill people uh, with the death penalty. So what's the Eighth Amendment for? If we torture people and we uh, kill people as a matter of policy then why even have the Eighth Amendment? There, we obviously don't protect against cruel and unusual punishment. I already explained with the Fourth Amendment, protection from unreasonable search and seizure. That's gone. We have the NSA doing warrantless spying on everybody. So, and then once you get rid of the First Amendment, it's a disaster. So he's a, a constitutional menace, and this weird exchange, I think, proves that.